audio sync, click, 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 audio sync, click, click, click. All right, everyone, welcome to the video. This one's going to be a bit of a, a different one, but hopefully it'll also be a fun one for you guys. Sorry, now that we're here. This is going to be a POV, point of view type of vlog, kind of like a vlog POV because I'm going to keep the audio in there and it's going to have me voicing over some it's like the perfect opportunity to actually use random thoughts while we go through this. Take your photo. Yeah. So all in all, it'll be like a combo of POV, thoughts, voiceover, and editing and photos. Look at me all nervous walking around with my camera. Can you go over there and I'm gonna go for a little bit distance. Thanks love. So on this particular walk, I had with me the GH5 with the Lumix Leica 12 to 60 f2.8 to 4. I also have the Freewell Magnetic Variable Indies on here with the Mist Base. I'm kind of forcing myself to use it. I figured that if I have it, I really should just make the effort to use it. Thank you. And on that Mist, I have the two to five stop variable ND. And on top of all of that, I have the Osmo Action mounted so to provide that POV that you'll be seeing. As I watch this now, I am struck just by how rich the colors are from this version of the 12 to 60 compared to 3.5 to 5.6 version. I am so happy that I upgraded. As someone who used the Lumix version for a few years, I can confidently say that the difference is night and day, in, in my opinion. And I say this knowing that there is a mist filter and an ND on there. So trust me, even without that, the difference isn't, I'm not gonna say stark, but the difference is nuts. Okay, for this one, some of you that have seen my brighter photos, such as this one, you might know that I, or you can tell that I tend to calibrate my photos, especially when there aren't any skin tones in there. I like to calibrate them so, so that the blues kind of go towards the cyan, and this just tends to produce photos that make me feel good. Okay, poor Julia, for this one, I didn't tell her that I was stopping to take a photo, so she kind of just walked on and I was behind a wall, so she thought she'd lost me for a good few seconds. Or maybe a couple of minutes, I don't know. Ah, and you can see very briefly here, I've been known to make my skies green on rare occasion, and that's just because I like it. It's not this time though, I, I resisted that urge. Uh, this one, the pink bin. I took notes after editing this one, so this one I am conflicted about. So the deal is that I dislike most of the photos during this particular walk. Uh, long brick lane. So I kind of have forced my way through some of these photo edits and the end result I don't mind but the amount of work it took to get it to look like this was kind of a rude reminder about how much more intentional I need to be with my photos. I took notes after editing this photo too so overall I'm happy with the session of photography like I just mentioned but I didn't have the confidence to get the shots I was hoping to get. But this editing session has kind of further showed me how a photo that makes you feel something or just makes you wonder something, maybe like what is that person thinking or what might she be looking at, can sometimes make all the technical aspects of, photo, of the photo become unimportant. So for example here, I've clipped the highlights and a lot of underexposed areas and to give the photo the balance that I want has resulted in digital noise being introduced, especially at Julia's face where I lifted the exposure most. But there we have an image that I have come to kind of, I've come to appreciate while I was editing it, even though I thought I was going to delete it. One of the coolest things about this photo and this video journey I have embarked is Julia's growing love for it. I, I love it when she asks me if she can take the camera to take some photos. It's kind of like she's given me the ultimate gift of allowing me to share this passion with her and allowing me to teach her what I know. And I too am giving her a gift through sharing with her what I know, what I'm learning. She's allowing me to be a teacher and I find that I learn a lot through the teaching process as well. Oh, this one, it took me five minutes to pluck up the courage and turn to take this photo. I'm so afraid of taking photos of strangers. Th that's something that I am going to be working on this year. All right, so take her messages for myself. 
practice self-confidence in your identity as a photographer, stop clipping your damn highlights. Sometimes all you need is a vibrant pink beanie to make your footage look cool. Kind of a further elaboration on that is that if you're gonna go out and take some photos of someone, sometimes really something vibrant and colorful can make quite a bit of difference. So whether it be a colorful beanie or maybe some other item of clothing to draw the eye, keep that in mind next time you go shooting with friends. And lastly, this is bonus footage. This is not Brick Lane, this is a different place that we ended the day off at. Don't be afraid to take, make and edit the photos in the way that makes you happy. Even if it ends up bad like this one, who cares? This is art and you have the right to have that artistic satisfaction. I want to be less embarrassed and that is a real intention that I'm setting for myself this year as I learn, as I improve and as I share my experience as an artist and a photographer. I'm done kind of, I'm sort of done with explaining myself and apologizing and I say that within reason of course so I challenge you to do the same print that photo book that no one will buy post that photo that no one's going to appreciate or put up that YouTube channel that nobody's going to watch do it now rather than later and I'll end it with that folks thanks so much for being here and I'll catch you in the next video